This presentation is on shoulder arthroscopic cases, slap tear, and instability. We'll show two cases and show the arthroscopic techniques of preparing the glenoid, passing the sutures through the labrum. In patients who have a slap tear, probably 50% also have anterior instability, so they can have a true slap tear and either capsular or an anterior inferior glenoid labrum tear as well. The first case is a 24-year-old right-hand dominant male athlete. He pitched in high school and he now boxes. By history, his shoulder had come out 30 times, slipped out of place in overhead positions when he had his arm behind the axis of his body or in externally rotated positions. If he says it's 30, it's probably many more times than that, maybe 300 times. And on physical exam, he, he had anterior apprehension, a labral click, pain and weakness as his arm was externally rotated greater than 90 degrees. This is his arthroscopic picture. He has a bucket handle tear of his labrum. So this developed over the course of his chronic recurrent dislocations and throwing. This is unfortunately very difficult because it's a chronic. See how the tissue looks not the best. He's 24. You can see the subscapularis out in the anterior aspect. The scope is in the back. Humeral head, this is lateral decubitus position. Humeral head is here and biceps tendon is up on the top. So what do we do with this? Can we fix it? Do we have to take it out? What do we do with the biceps with a bucket handle tear? This shows now his anterior inferior instability as well, if we can get the scope over that bucket handle tear. He also has a bank heart lesion inferiorly. Can we repair this, go 360, or do we have to remove part of it? What would you do? So the cannula is in the front, working portal in the front. Debridement is being done, trying to remove as little tissue as possible, assessing if this bucket handle tear can be repaired. Looks much like a bucket handle tear of the meniscus, deciding what has vascularity pattern that would allow it to be repaired. Unfortunately, due to the chronicity and the lack of vascularity, this bucket handle tear was resected. Do it with a shaver. You can also get arthroscopic scissors and a Schlesinger clamp in there to remove it. Debridement using a motorized shaver was done. And we still have the anterior inferior instability in the front. Anterior inferior preparation. So we had instability in addition to the slap. You can see here how far off the labrum is and the capsule. It's important to prepare the glenoid to get a good bleeding base. Oftentimes in these chronic anterior instability, there's a lot of fibrous tissue. You may find a bank, bony bank heart, but you have to strip the tissue anterior inferior so you can re attach it in a way to establish the normal lip of that golf tee, if you will, anteriorly. See the biceps a little bit better. Still have a chunk of that unstable bucket and tear of the labrum to remove. There's his hill sax lesion, which is consistent with his anterior inferior instability. In the shoulder, we don't have to move the scope around much. Just use your light cord. Glenoid preparation is very important to successful anterior reconstruction of the shoulder. This is removing the remainder of that unstable slap tissue. Again, you can transect it and then with your arthroscopic scissors, you can see we're transecting it anteriorly. Fortunately, most slap tears are not a bucket handle or a type four that, are, that have to be removed. Usually we can repair them. 
if the labrum is debrided and the biceps is unstable, then a biceps tenodesis or tenotomy is done. So now the piece is transected. See how unstable it is with it not being attached on the other side. And now that we've got the slap, unstable slap tear out of our face, we can mobilize the anterior inferior capsule ligamentous complex. Again, prepare the glenoid. And now we can reestablish that normal soft tissue lip of the T anteriorly. See how beat up he is in the back. That's that posterior flap of the of the um, bucket handle tear. Again, non-vascular tissue. Not the greatest of tissues. Certainly not repairable. You can use a duck bill in the shoulder. Use the arthroscopic shaver. And now we've got a lot of labral tissue to repair. Suction out those pieces. At this time, we were using an osseous raptor. The devices have two sutures on them. Establish an anterior inferior portal. In this case, I left the scope in the back. Tie as you go. If you have anterior inferior instability, start in that quadrant, tie your sutures down, and then go more superiorly. You can see the two cannulas. Again, scope is in the back. Different ways of passing these. You can pass them through the tissue and use a nitinol or suture relay, or you can do it directly. So there's a retrograde and antegrade, a suture relay system, or a direct system using a parrot beak. Glenoid's been prepared, and then this is as the anchor's going in. You have to get as perpendicular as you can and high on the face of the glenoid to be able to advance the tissue as much as you want to, or as much as you need to to restore stability. Know whether you need to drill this, tap it, and know your system that you're using. There are many different labral repair systems. It certainly is nice to put the suture in the bone and then pass the suture. This is after the repair. Here's our biceps tendon up here. This is after we've repaired using six sutures, four anteriorly. This case is relatively old. We used to repair more of the posterior superior labrum as well as the anterior inferior labrum. You can see here where basically he has a pretty much a 360 labral repair, anterior superior, anterior inferior, and posterior superior. And the biceps tendon look pretty good in this 24-year-old. You don't want to over-constrain these patients, so you want to move them early, but not allow them to go back to contact sports or boxing for at least six months, if not longer. This is with a scope anterior. You can see that degenerative tissue in the back. We couldn't really do any posterior inferior repair, so a debridement of that posterior labrum was done, putting the scope in the front and the working portal then in the back. This is with a scope in the front. And again, how degenerative, non-repairable that tissue is. It's not the best of tissue in the posterior aspect. So unfortunately, an individual who had been a shoulder abuser, if you will, kept on doing a lot of sports for many years, probably had problems for over 10 years, and he's only 24. Give him the best shoulder you can, but it won't be normal. Showing with the scope anterior superior portal, the bumper stability of our anterior repair. 
So you can still see how we've advanced the tissues over the lip of the glenoid with those suture anchors and two sutures in each of the anchors. Stability is reestablished. No translation of the humeral head anteriorly after the arthroscopic repair. Different sutures can be used. These are non-absorbable sutures. Make sure the sutures are tied with good tension, but respect the tissues. You don't want the suture to tear through the tissues anteriorly. Grab capsule and labrum and reestablish the bumper effect. This is the subscapularis bursa, which is a common location of loose bodies. This patient didn't have loose bodies, but looking down from the scope is anterior superior. You can see that space. So I'm looking down on the subscap, looking now at the middle glenohumeral ligament and the biceps to the right. And again, the bumper of the anterior repair. Excellent reestablishment of the bumper effect of the labrum and stability. The second case is a subscapularis tear and anterior instability. This is a 49-year-old right-hand dominant female homemaker. She had a shoulder injury when she was swinging a basket full of clothes overhead, and she had limited range of motion. She had an anterior apprehension test. Her O'Brien's test, or if we put her arm forward, thumb down position, resist us moving the arm down, so ask them to push up against you. There's pain in a thumb down position that is relieved in a palm up position located over the proximal biceps. She had weakness in internal more than external rotation. This is her arthroscopic finding. The scope is in the back, humeral head up above. This is a sublabral hole right here. You can see here when we rotate her, this is the anterior inferior glenohumeral ligament and the labrum. Look how much different her tissues are than the first case that I showed. So the tissues can be different based on the chronicity or basically the genetics of the patient. There's the subscapularis right there. She did have a small 10% subscapularis tear. We can miss these. You need to use the 70 degree scope and this was the upper 10% of her subscapularis, so I actually didn't have to repair this, but it's in that upper part of it at the insertion of the subscapularis. So we're debriding the labrum. This is a normal variant that we see probably in 10 or 15% of patients, a sublabral hole. If you repair that, it's not going to work. You're going to over-constrain the shoulder. They'll get stiff. And you can see how the tissues up here are moving more than they should, but that's the sublabral hole. Right in that area is the sublabral hole. Preparation of the glenoid. Her biceps tendon is right here. And she has a slap tear associated with instability. Good view of the biceps anterior superior, biceps here glenoid, and subscap. And if you think about the rotation of the humerus causing pain, the peel back maneuver when we externally rotate the arm, the labrum peels back from the glenoid, and that's what causes the symptoms in maximal internal and external rotation. The biceps looks normal. She had a upper 10% subscapularis tear. This is with the 30 degree scope, but the 70 degree scope is very helpful to be able to see this, and particularly if you need to do a repair, then this can be done with accessory portals, localizing these with your 18 gauge needle. This is with a scope posteriorly, showing you gotta take the synovium down, the soft tissues overlying this tear to appreciate it, and then if it's 50% or significantly loose, then that should be repaired. 
This is with the scope posteriorly doing the repair of the slap tear. Again, you need to be as perpendicular as you can or you'll go off of the glenoid and not be able to put the labrum back where it needs to be. I like doing this through a cannula, just holding my guide so we don't lose the hole. So we drill it and then hammer the labral anchor into place. And there are one or two sutures that come off of this, usually two, so we get two sutures per one anchor. And this shows our repair. We use two anchors. You can do simple sutures, or oftentimes I prefer doing mattress, so then the knots are off away from the articular side because sometimes these sutures can make the shoulder squeak, so it's good if you do a mattress. I just feel that that reapproximates the labrum better. Sometimes you use simple sutures or mattress. You can see now the biceps is under better tension. The sublabral hole was left didn't require fixation because it's a normal variant, subscapularis out in the front, biceps tendon in the front. This shows the scope posterior after the subscapularis debridement. Again, getting that down to a little more normal tissue, subscapularis is up here, inserting on the lesser tuberosity. This just shows with our cannula anteriorly why we decided that we didn't need to repair it. It was not loose and was only estimated at 10% torn. In conclusion, one must understand the principles of glenoid preparation, anchor placement, know normal from abnormal labral anatomy, assess the subscapularis, and make appropriate, appropriately placed portals for what you find in the shoulder. This is done with needle visualization and then dilating the tissues and then getting whatever cannula you need to do the work. If the portals are in the right place, the surgery is easy.